said that I cheated, but I didn't cheat. Oh my gosh, those chattering noises. Stop it. I'm like a pathetic turtle. And Valentina is off to be our first Kerbal into space. Hello, my name is Mike Gabin and welcome to my KSP campaign. We got 78.2 science from my moon flyby last episode. And yeah, I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm going straight for aviation. That gets me the 1.25 meter fairing, which I need to really get my bigger boosters working the way I want. There's also this Wings 3. It's only one science point for Wings 3. And that gets me, I like the swept wings and some nice uh, fins and canards too. So we'll definitely grab that one. And that'll be good too because Aviation also gave me the Weasley jet engine along with its associated air intakes. That should allow me to build a much better jet than the one I have. Do a little bit more with aircrafts than I simply, my very much overused and aging Juno M1 that I've had for so long in this series. It's time for a better aircraft and so I think that's a little bit overdue as well. That leaves me with enough for... I mean, I could save up for one of these other ones. I mean, one of the ones I really have been putting off and putting off is science down here. Uh, I don't quite have enough I could save for it, but really, you know what I want to get into? I want to start putting Kerbals into space, finally. So no, for uh, about 22 science, I can unlock small re-entry pods. This is the single crude re-entry pod, that's all it is. It is 771 kilograms. I should be able to put that into orbit. Even with having to tag on a few things to help keep my Kerbals alive. So that is going to be the last one I grab. And that is going to be what this episode is going to focus on. Getting a Kerbal into orbit. And I have 389,000 Kerb bucks. Enough to upgrade the space plane hangar with a bit to spare. Oh, I think, I think that's happening too. That is happening too. There we go. And that is also going to take some time. Uh, let's see. Space paint hanger. 13 days? Oh my gosh. So we'll have to wait a little bit before I can build that nice plane. I want to build a good plane. Uh, I also want to upgrade the launch pad soon and the tracking station. I think those would be my next two targets. But in the meantime, I do have upgrade points. I got four upgrade points. I'm wondering, did I? I must have forgot to do one <laughs> now I do want to start getting stuff happening in the space plane hangar you know a little bit I'll have those Weasley engines we'll build something a little bigger go a little further a little higher so I'm gonna put a couple of points there get that up to a build rate that's the same as the VAB build rates but then I think what I'll do is start another bay in the vehicle assembly building. I'll put the other two points that way and get multiple things going in the vehicle assembly building. That's kind of my idea. Uh, and, you know, something for contracts, something for science, something for Kerbals. That's what I'm thinking. Right now, I only have one thing going in the vehicle assembly building. It's going to be done in a few hours. That's that powered lander test that you saw me fail at last episode. So after picking up another contract, I headed into the VAB where I discovered something unfortunate. Uh, despite having a contract to test the 1.25 meter fairing, uh, I don't have them available to me. Uh, this is some sort of glitch which has happened to me before. And it's unfortunate because my 1.25 meter heavier boosters are dependent upon that fairing. And I need those boosters for my heavier payloads. Like for instance, I have this test contract to lift the 900 kilogram thud engine into orbit and uh, yeah my little 0.625 meter boosters can't really do that now I suppose I could redesign something using the 0.625 meter fairings but I'm lazy <laughs> and it's only five days until those fairings will unlock 
Uh, thanks to the tech tree unlock, and then no stupid glitch like this can take them away from me. So instead I decided I'm going to wait the five days. Now I did build something. I built something that's based around my 0.625 meter striker R4 booster. See, I still have uses for these things. And you'll be seeing that just a little bit later in this episode. But first, it was a bit more of a pleasant surprise waiting for me in the VAB. Oh, I know what I wanted to check. Ha! Ha! Okay, if anyone watched my Sandbox Saturday last Saturday, um, I said that I cheated, but I didn't cheat. I do have access to a small pressurized oxygen tank. I had to add that to... Okay, if you didn't watch the episode, that doesn't make any sense, but that actually makes me happy. Okay. So I did not cheat last Saturday. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's push this into the queue. How long is this thing going to take to build? Just three days. Um, yeah. Alrighty. So let's do a better job of this than we did last time. Now, one thing I can do is I can take advantage of... There we are. Our monolith. We can put a waypoint on there using the waypoint manager and that gives me something to really really shoot for definitely it's pretty much almost perfectly due north okay uh bum 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 yes we don't want any of that on oh let's queue up our contract uh this is the powered landing contract So got to come within 40 meters of that waypoint. So let's let's do her. Woo! Why is it taking off so so? Why does it have hardly any fuel in it? Is that? Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Okay. What? How could it, something have? I don't know. Maybe that's what I had. It, no, no, no. This could be right. This could be right. I don't know why I have the fairing on there, to be honest. Okay, let's ditch the fairing and let's get our probe going. Gear up, engines on, get ready. Now I got to, whoa. No, no, no this is right. Let's not watch this. I really should have put some parachutes on that shit. Goodness sakes, you bonehead. What the heck? That was the worst. Okay. I clearly got way too cut. Oh my gosh. Alright, I gotta build that again. <laughs> One day this has to work, right? Off. Gear. Ah! And. Slow down and think about what the frack you're doing. Slow down. And of course I had nothing. Look at these landing legs. <laughs> I didn't even have this set to Ah. Uh. Okay, I'm not giving up on this. We'll get back to this again a little later in the episode. Right now though, let's get to the Octo 3. This is the vehicle you saw in the VAB just earlier this episode. 
Okay, there's a contract here. Where is it? Oh, there we are. Okay, we'll put that over. And the contract is to test the spark at an altitude of between 400 and 410 kilometers. I don't have a KOS script because I didn't want to add the mass onto this thing. Uh, I also do want to pay attention to science. There we go. Because there will be, hopefully, some data collection happening with this. Alright, SAS on. Good to keep doing some manual launches anyway, not to be always dependent upon KOS. So, next stage. Slow down our drop here a little bit. I think we're dropping over a little bit too quickly in our gravity turn. stage. Now, I do kind of like this little rocket. Multiple stages. I've done nothing to improve it, by the way. I mean, it, it, it's still running on the Cogswell with spiders. For Gim, there's no reaction wheels in the booster at all. I could add all those things, but I'm just really too lazy. <laughs> All right, so we are going to shoot for straight going straight to Apoapsis here. Stage. Oh. Oh, that was sloppy. Now my staging just right. All right. Uh, should be okay. So we're going for four, just over 400 kilometers. We're just gonna just go straight for Apoaps. That's the way to do it. Some heat things on all of our tail fins. Oh, got some random chatterer noises. <laughs> all right. Oh, more than enough there. And then we have 285 meters per second just to get the, the, uh, here, turn that off, because I don't, I did put a battery on it, <laughs> but I don't have a ton of electrical power, and there's no solar. All right, we can lose the fairing. There we go, nice and clean. Get ready to extend that antenna once we're in high space, because we should be starting to get some, oops, that's not what I want. Oh, this is getting annoying. There we go. I'm going to try it. Just let this tumble. Time warp. This isn't going to stay in space. Uh, the probe doesn't detach. There is a spark engine. Got to remember to test the spark engine too. Once I get to an appropriate altitude. And the experiment we should be performing is the mite experiment in high space, I believe. Oh my gosh, those chatterer noises. Stop it. I think it's thinking, okay, is this high space yet? Oh, now I'm a little bit confused. 
Oh, of course, the might requires a minimum inclination, so... Fine print gets me again, so that doesn't matter, that doesn't matter. Alright, so we're not transmitting a thing. <laughs> but, uh, what we will do... I forgot about that. That's okay. We will, uh, do our... Once we're at 400 kilometers, we'll do our test of the spark, which is tucked in there. That's the contract. There's no thrust on the spark. But staging will just test it. Oh my gosh, that noise. Is there a way to turn that off? I don't think so. Chatterer, hear you. Quiet. <laughs> Maybe having that on. I don't know. We'll see. It's off for now. All right, 400 kilometers, test the spark. Okay, and stay. Oh, no, we got to have an orbit first. Oh, do not stage yet. Okay. So, orbit's not green yet. So, we got to push our periapsis out of the atmosphere. Get ourselves a little higher. Battery charges absolutely fine. So we get okay here we go let's start getting ready to put you onto apoapsis running on the reaction wheels in the probe body right now there we go okay let's start pushing this i'm gonna have to do the test on the way down because I'm too high right now, but that's okay. We'll, we'll tilt this way. So we... There we go. Okay, just. I'm noticing that the delta V calculation is very confused <laughs> because of the spark. Come on. There we go. Okay, that's an orbit. Thinks I have zero delta V. <laughs> that's probably because of the spark engine. All right, we got to get to back below 410. And then we can deorbit. Okay, so just waiting for the altitude to be right. There we go. Test. Hurrah, something successful. Okay, good. Uh, the spark is not activated, so I just have to turn around. I have no idea what my delta V is, nor do I care. It's enough to get to deorbit. Okay. And done. All right. I will call that a success, even though I didn't get the science I wanted, but that's okay. Well, maybe this will give me the confidence I need to attack that power landing again. Okay. Calm down. Are you within 40 meters? No. So we can do ourselves a little hop. I'm pretty sure that'll be cool. I didn't realize I still don't even have the contract on. <laughs> Where is this one? Powered lander. Yeah, I'm thinking about why I have trouble with this, and you know what I think it is? It's just Kerbin's gravity, I would assume. I'm so used to doing the moon and min miss, and I just keep underestimating this. So let's, let's a little bit of power. See what I mean? Stop, 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 stop. Okay, gear down. 
Well, do I not have the reaction wheel control to flip this over? Are you f fracking me? There's the reaction wheels are not strong. Okay, gear up again. Can we not? I'm stuck upside down. I am stuck upside down. I'm like a pathetic, pathetic turtle 65 meters away. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, shut up! <laughs> okay, aviation's coming first. Thank goodness. Let's do something that I hopefully can accomplish and feel good about. Okay, so I got my pod. More importantly, I also have both sets of fairings and I should, but noticing the boosters haven't been, yeah, my hammer boosters. Okay, so my biggest booster can lift 1,040 kilograms into low carbon orbit. We're gonna start with you. There we are, that is the, what is this one? The onion re-entry module. Notice that the next one, the two crude one, is called the P. Why is a P bigger than an onion? I don't know. That doesn't make sense. So it already has built-in food, oxygen, and stuff. Um, no, no, I think that's all good. Oh, look at that, 140 units of electrical charge. Don't get cocky with that. Now we can also configure the pod. Where do we do this? configure the pod we got a scrubber for taking out the this is the first time I'm gonna be putting a Kerbal in space and the last thing I want to do is kill said Kerbal configure the pod so I want to make sure that my Kerbal can do an orbit and be not dead <laughs> So, we have a scrubber for taking carbon dioxide out. I think that's a good thing. We'll keep that going. And then we also have pressure control. Use nitrogen to maintain internal pressure at a comfortable level. That helps the Kerbal not be so stressed. That seems like a good thing. We're not going to be doing EVAs because we haven't upgraded the, I think it's the astronaut complex that you have to upgrade to be able to do EVAs, if I'm not mistaken. In, in anywhere else besides curb and surface. Uh, control the humidity. Monoprop oxygen fuel cell. We have solar panels, so there's really, I think I'm good with that. So I think actually pressure control might be my best plan. There's also this. Yes, this gives you some information on what it thinks here. So. Uh, it's pressurized, yes. Comfortable is modest. That's okay. Living space is a bit cramped, yeah. But he's not going to be up for too long. Hmm. Noticing here... So what can you change these to? This is food, water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, hydrogen, ammonia. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um... <laughs> So he's got five days of food, five days of water, perpetual. Oh, that's because he thinks I'm in on the surface. Can I change this target situation? Low orbit. There we go. That's where we care. So five days of oxygen. So we're think okay there. Uh, humidity. Got no humidity control, but good scrubbing and good pressurization so if I change this to humidity control yeah I think I'm gonna keep pressure control I think that should be he's gonna feel stressed radiation should be nominal reliability malfunctions a quarter of a malfunction one malfunction per year on average is what I'm assuming that hopefully I sh will have to think about that now that stress is current. okay 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 all right so what we'll do there's my onion let's keep all this where I can see it actually let's just turn that off I think I'm good with that okay first we're gonna need a method of descent uh, probably, this is the, 
That's a, too small of a parachute, right? I, I has to be. That's the Mark 16 parachute. The Mark 16 large... That seems kind of big now. Maybe that is the appropriate parachute for this little guy. I, it has to be. It has to be. I think that should be okay. Alright, we're going to give him some propulsion. want to keep the mass down. Almost 900 kilograms already. What if we stuck with m small, tiny amount of monopropellant for our, for our propulsion? Wow, that is super tiny. I have 193 meters per second of delta V. That is enough for the deorbit. And ooh, we are getting close already to, to, well, we can take out They got half, that's about a meters per second. That saved us quite a lot of mass. Reaction mix. That will give us plenty of attitude control. We are now again getting, getting kind of massive. Wow. And I still don't have the electric charge situation. I only have 27 minutes of electric charge. Is that because of the reaction wheels? Still 27 minutes of electric charge, so it's not even factoring in the, using the reaction wheels into that. That's just keeping everybody alive, I suspect. Boom, 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 boom. Then what we're gonna do... Yes, what I think I'll do. Let's get our booster involved. We are clearly going to be using the hammer in the R3 configuration. But what I'm thinking, okay, let's get this here, is just not, just, yeah, this will be the whole thing. We have, again, only 27 minutes of battery power, so we should definitely be thinking about electricity. That's nothing a couple of batteries won't fix. And after christening this, the Onion 1, all that was left was for us to pick our pilot. And um, Jebediah is already level 1 because of some funkiness. So I'm going to pick Valentina so she'll be level 1 too when this is all done. But I think stay, step 1, let's save this. All I want to do though is test this piece in orbit. So we're going to take this off and we're going to run a simulation. And we're going to be Kerbin. Should be able to, oh, orbit selection, Kerbin. Uh, altitude, let's go with 80, I don't know, 80,000 meters. All right, let's try this. Deploy the fairing. Okay, that deployed fine. On. Lights are on. We can easily maneuver. I want to test the descent too. Oh my gosh, I really... This is going to drive me... Shut up. <laughs> I, gotta, I think I got to turn that off. It's going to drive me crazy. I thought it seemed like a good idea at the time, Shatterer. And I'm not going to show you the whole simulation, but I did want to show you that I was concerned about doing this simulation. This being the first crewed orbiter that I had, and the first time I've had a Kerbal in space with Kerbalism. I really wanted to make sure there wasn't something that I overlooked. I mean, overlooking something on an uncrewed mission, no big deal. Overlooking something on a crewed mission could mean the death of that Kerbal, and I really wanted to make sure that uh, I don't end up uh, putting Valentina into an early grave. I didn't bother simulating the launch though. That's how confident I am in my booster. But one thing I did do is I did decide to build a rescue variant of the Onion 1. Uh, and that was simply done by just simply sticking in a probe body and that allows it to be able to fly uncrewed because 
Kerbalism does simulate the odd malfunction in the that main engine, if it fails on the orbiter, Val's stuck in space. So I thought it would be prudent to have a rescue ship on standby. So I ended up pushing both of them into the building queue. They're both going to take about six days to build, but I'm not going to launch Val until I have that rescue uh, version of the Onion 1 sitting in the bay just in case that it's necessary. And like I said, you'll be seeing that very, very shortly, but while that stuff was all being built, while there was time for one more kick at that can, let's take a look at that powered landing test. God dang it, but it counted. <laughs> You know what's going to be one of my projects over the next little while is building me some sort of descent script. I got the beginnings of a hover script and do powered landings that way because I really, really do have trouble with this. Okay, done. Done and dunner. Recover and send out the crew to clean up the garbage. So, reconditioning the launch pad. Oh, space plane hangar's almost ready. Nice. So that's gonna happen first. Let's let's watch. Let's zoom in on the space plane hangar. Space plane hangar is ready to upgrade. And then I'm gonna get into building some bigger planes. Here we go. Oh, nicey, nicey, nice. All right. Oh, and I really do want to build some bigger, better planes. But I think that's going to have to wait until next episode. No, my first Kerbal in space, that is too exciting not to get into right now. Nerve-wracking, but exciting. Okay, we are absolutely turning this gibberish off. That is going to drive me crazy. I think it's this that keeps doing. Maybe if I just muted that. I think that's the issue. Let's let's try that. We'll take the mute off. <laughs> it's that noise. I think it has something to do with Kerbalism. Very much confused by it. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, we are definitely going to keep an eye on Val. That is going to be job number one. Put this somewhere important right beside her picture why does Val okay I guess she doesn't okay if anybody was watching uh, my s sandbox Saturday knows that that was that was my first experience putting a Kerbal into space uh, with Ker the Kerbalism mod and it was Bill and I immediately killed him <laughs> so if I'm a little bit jumpy a little bit nervous uh, that's the reason why now to be fair um, Bill was just wearing a spacesuit of course this being campaign mode I'm playing with no reverse so if she dies well that's it I've lost her and of course the onion rescue is also sitting on standby it can be rolled out in a matter of hours should it be needed okay Val are we ready I hope you're ready because I'm oh we got a contract too why don't we get the contract ready goodness sakes our contract is manned orbit sorry women orbit <laughs> and safe return okay let's do it BAM we're off two one and Oh! And 
Valentina is off to be our first Kerbal into space. I guess we could do crew reports too. I didn't even think about that. Where's, um, oh, uh, can I get the pod? I was not thinking about science at all. Okay, forget the pod. We'll get the pod once the fairing's gone. I wasn't even thinking science at all with this. Um, she can't do an EVA, because I still have to upgrade. I believe it's the astronaut complex I have to upgrade to allow her to do EVAs, other words, other other places besides Kerbin's shores. Ah, as those three boosters crashed into each other. Was that the first use of my R3 configuration? I believe it was. Yes. First use. I get confused because I get mixed up between simulations. I've been testing in simulations. Did I actually use the R3 booster? No. And this is just under the 18 ton limit for the launch pad. So definitely the launch pad is going to be my next target. And then I can build bigger boosters. All right, just about to lose there. Onto the mighty torch engine. This should cut when we get to an, al an apoapsis of 80 kilometers, which should be any moment, not any moment, right about now. All right. Val is still doing well nothing stressed going on feeling a little cramped and a little capsule built just for one but other words otherwise I think she is doing well okay attitude lock disengaged programs over so now Val it's up to you I do want to keep a track on electricity it shouldn't be a problem I got a lot there's no solar generation once I lose this engine, but... Okay, let's lose the fairing. Excellent. Put on SAS, get control of this. And you know what? Let's actually even put on our lights. Okay, can we do a crew report? There we go. We're in high space. Of course we can do a crew report. Let's tuck that up there. Let it tumble. Oh, I didn't put an engineer chip on it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I gotta get in the habit of that, don't I? Alright, we're gonna put an engineer chip on this next time. Let's look at our data window here. Oh, that just changed that. Okay, well, Val's doing fine. Crew reports are biome specific, so she should be able to do a fair, you know, good amount of them. Okay. Yeah, let's let's start Bruce Burn. Watching my apoapsis there, trying to keep it from going up, using pitch control for that. And watching obviously periapsis as well. We get ourselves a nice little orbit. I don't. Whoa, 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 push Z instead of X. <laughs> okay, okay, let's turn that off. Oh my gosh, okay. All we gotta do now is splash down to complete the contract, but I'm gonna let Val... I forgot about all these crew reports. Now, she can't transmit anything, and they're all biome-specific. Can't do an EVA, right? Yeah. 
But we can do crew reports. All right. Let's put this one. Got to watch a couple things here. Let's put this one on info. Can I get both those? Win no, it just switches those. Okay. So I do want to keep track of electricity, but it should be fine. Yeah, we're going to go around for a bit. We're going to go around a bit. We'll keep keep track of electricity. Still got 285 meters per second of delta V left. Plenty of time to do to do our deorbit. I see a lot of messages here. Let's see. Uh, onion. Yeah, that's complete. That's complete. Break. Oh. It's okay. What? Okay. Oh, if that actually happened, that's gonna peeve me off. I had a contract to break the sound barrier and saying I failed it, but it wasn't because it wasn't an aircraft. That's ridiculous. So these are, okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, those are just debris destroyed. That's normal. Oh, I thought I would have gotten some sort of milestone or something. Goodness sakes. Val can stay up here for a little while. She has five days. I'm not going to keep her up for five days. But we'll collect what science we can. We might as well. Time warp a little more. Just got to keep it. Electricity is really going to be the, the key here. I cannot let my electricity go down. Let's put the view on free. It's always nicer on free. There we go. That's much better. Oh, oh, never mind. Electricity isn't our limiting factor. Hard drive space is our limiting factor. So we've collected all the science that we can. We'll close. We'll, actually, we won't close this. What we'll do is we will switch this back to Val's vitals. <clears throat> this is done. Time for us to get back down to the surface. So. Nicely done, Valentina. Oh, we should. Yeah, let's go around one more time. What is this? Oh, that's my Mooner 1 debris. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. I have tons and tons of crap in orbit. <laughs> uh, I should really do something about that. Okay, here we go. Actually, I want to see where is that too. There we go. Alright, now I do have the trajectories mod installed. Not really had a reason to pay attention to it yet, but now we do. Okay, let's put Val... Oh, our electric charge is getting low, so this is a good time to come down anyway. Been up for almost an hour. Coming down. Oh, I think trajectories is not going to work for me because I probably have to upgrade the. Tra you know what? That's fair enough. I don't have patch conics. Why should I have trajectories? That's fair. Um, let's keep it at that. Okay. I like to orient myself with a normal uh, normal to the plane of my trajectory so that when I eject this thing it gets pushed off to the side rather than potentially pushed in my path or I will crash into it. We will hang on to it for now. Valentina is still a very very happy camper. Could definitely use an antenna to transmit. But you know what? We'll build another one that will be a more sciencey one. We'll dress this thing up to make it look better. All right, let's dis let's disengage our service module. And now I have lost all reaction wheels, so this thing is just going to tumble. But 
it should orient itself. I'll keep an eye on the parachute. It should, I sh yeah, it will be fine. I was thinking of arming that up ahead of time, but you know what? We'll just let her go. All right. This, yep, yeah, it's starting to orient itself in a retrograde direction. I did take out half the ablator just to save a little bit of weight from low orbit. You just don't need that much. It won't even use a tiny fraction of what's there, so I'm being very, very safe. I played around with taking out lots of the oxygen and the water and the food. It just really didn't save much weight. Maybe the water might save weight. That would be safe, but whatever. You know what, maybe leaving five days of resources up there is a good idea in case, you know, an engine failed or something like that and she got stuck in orbit and I was able, you know, that gives plenty of time to rescue her. We are going to come short of the KSC, I can see that, but that's okay. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. We're gonna we're gonna land in the ocean to the west of the KSC, but that's okay. I was sitting there waiting for the trajectories thing to pop up, and by the time it, I realized it wasn't gonna pop up, I'd probably already burned past what I should have. It's all good. Warning, lost signal. Yeah, of course we lost the signal because of plasma blackouts. That's okay. Okay, there we go. Everything is good. You know, now that that stupid modem sound is gone for Chatterer, I'm not hating Chatterer as much as I was just a little bit ago. Oh, wait, let's deploy the parachute. There we are. We are a long ways from the KSC, but that's okay. I kind of botched that, but it's all going to count. Ships are on their way. I'm glad that it's landing in the water. The one thing about the roundy shape of this, you put this on the side of a hill, well, you can fit, you can uh, definitely fill in how the rest of that's going to go. Right. Thus far, that was spectacularly uneventful. What is this message here? Stage just oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I know what that is. That was our service module. Alright. Parachute's now fully deployed. It's gotta do the last several hundred meters. I wonder how much science she's collected. I didn't even look. We'll find out when we get in. All those crew reports. Onion battery's almost empty. Yeah, but almost is not. I, I timed that fine. She is fine for batteries. Okay. There we go. Excellent. Um, No, she can't even store anything. So let's just recover. Okay, that was a long time coming. 33 science, that's pretty happy there. Our pod, Valentina is now level one. Hoorah, I, I think I can comfortably start the process of upgrading the launch pad, so why don't we do that? How long is that gonna take? Looking at this. Launch pad's going to take five days, and that will allow me to build some bigger boosters, get something a little bit more functional <laughs> into orbit, something that can stay there for a little while. But you know, I think that's all going to have to be for future episodes. So in the meantime, I thank you for watching, and hope to see you again next time.